Hello everyone, my name is Royce. Um, thank you to be here and it's my pleasure to be here. Okay, the name of this session is um, Power in Pairs, how one fasting template revealed over 100 IE user after free vulnerabilities. Pairs is the name of the fuzzing strategy we use. Uh, first, I would like to apologize that our board cannot be here today because of the visa issue. And here is a little bit introduction about us. Bo is a member of 557. He discovered vulnerabilities before on Windows Office, Adobe Reader, Flash, and other platforms. And me, my name is Royce, and majorly focused on Windows internal malware and exploit detection. Um, this picture is from the OSVDB, and we started we started try to find IE vulnerabilities with fuzzing around one year ago, and you can see from this picture. Uh, this picture is number of the uh, CVE disco disclosed by Palto Networks. It starts growing after we began our IE vulnerability hunting. In the very beginning, we think if the result of the CVE number can reach like dozens, we will be very happy. But in the end, it reaches over 70, like a basketball game score. So we are very excited. Today we would like to share the um, fuzzing strategy we used and how we did it in detail. Okay, um, fuzzing, uh, for many people it's simply a testing technique. You run a lot of samples on a large, of, on a large number of machines and hope it can generate some useful dumps and try to find uh, vulnerability on those dumps. Uh, this concept, this high level concept on uh, while correct, actually overlooks many hidden details of fuzzing. Uh, what is the most important factor of fuzzing? We think it is not machine, we think it is not how long we spend on fuzzing, because we don't have 200 or 300 machines, we don't have 5 years or 10 years to do fuzzing, so we think the core problem of fuzzing is how to generate high quality test cases effectively. High quality test case means uh, less garbage and more useful crash, more vulnerability. So uh, we want to, we would like to attack this problem, but first of all, we need to uh, solve one thing. How to describe a web page for test for a case generation purpose. You know there are many, many things on a web page like attribute, tags. So we ask ourselves a question. Um, is it possible to design one web page template that can describe and cover most cases? The value of this universal template is that it can greatly reduce the complexity of test case generation. So we study many zero-day samples, we study daily browsing web pages, and we study MAPP POCs, and we conclude that most of the web pages with Internet Explorer vulnerabilities can be described as the following template. In the beginning of template, we have a compatible meta tag. Compat compatible meta tag um, uh, indicate which version of the IE you would like the web page to render us. Uh, like IE5, emulate IE7, IE8, IE9. They are slightly different between each version. Then we have CSS part. CSS describes the look and formatting of a web page. Then we have script function. Here we use JavaScript it can dynamically change the web page content. We also call this part dynamic part. And um, in the end, we have static part, which is HTML. And usually we will um, assign 
uh, one function from a side function from the dynamic part to the event of the static part. Um, like here, we assign a fast zero to the unload event. So uh, fast zero can be triggered while this page loading. So this is it. This is the template that can cover 99% of the cases. Uh, theoretically, we can discover almost every vulnerability by this template. But in fact, it is impossible because combination explosion. How long it would take to enumerate all the combination of the HTML plus JavaScript plus CSS plus compatible information, uh, it will take long, 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 long time. So adding some randomness is the approach to solve this problem. Some randomness is necessary to help us to construct test cases that is nearly impossible to conceive. Uh, because web page that is uh, easy to conceive may be already tested by the QA, which is, means no problem. But randomness also has some drawbacks. Uh, we, there are at least two points of the two problems of the randomness. The first one is how random is our random? Does it repeat? If the random method is no good, sometimes we will generate duplicate test cases, so it is waste of time. And we also notice that we have an array of machines, and actually some of the machines, they are executing similar test cases, or the same test cases, which is also another waste of time. The second problem is um, we cannot track the relationships between statements. If we simply generate test cases randomly, the statement, the relationship between each statement sometimes very weak. Sometimes the whole test case become a garbage. So we would like to enhance the relationship between the statements. We, we want to guide the randomness. We need directions. But how to do it? How to guide the randomness? Uh, one day, one thing happened, and this experience gave us an idea how to guide the randomness. One day, Bo's wife asked him to repair her broke iPhone screen. Okay, as you know, Bo is a great hacker, so he's a good hacker, he's very good, so he should be no problem, no sweat. Okay, he almost did it, but after he put the, he replaced the screen, we found two more screws on the table. Those screws should be inside the iPhone, but they are on the table, so something goes wrong. And we turn it around, we found, we cannot find the camera. Camera is missing. And the worst thing is, this iPhone is dead. We cannot turn it on. All right. So what we learned from this story, things learned from this experience is, maybe engineers are not good at repairing things. Just maybe, just maybe. And Maybe engineers make mistakes taking things apart, like undo things. And maybe engineers make mistakes putting things back together, like redo something. And most importantly, we think this assumption probably also applies to the IE engineers. Okay, so we have a very rough idea, uh, trying to do something, then undo something. So maybe there are some reference, will trigger some reference issue, user after free issue, or maybe we try to redo something. We can trigger some issues. Okay. Let's describe this idea in flowchart. Um, in first stage, we do something first, then in second stage, we do something else randomly. And in final stage, we do, so, we do something contrary to the first stage. Or we can initialize a status to a value A, then we do something else. And in the final stage, we assign that va status to value B. Okay, 
We call this idea pair. Once we have this idea, we started to build our own fuzzer. The first version of our fuzzer, actually um, we do it very easy, in a very easy way. Um, there are three objects can execute commands. Execute command is IE only. We can execute various commands on three different kinds of objects. The first one is document and selection and range object. We can execute commands on this object, then execute a undo command. That's it. And there are many, many interesting um, commands we can try, like we copy something, then undo. We delete something, then we undo. We refresh, we insert a button, then undo. And very effectively, we, f we found something <laughs> to this way. And the second, the second thing we tried as a pair strategy is we try to manipulate content. Uh, here's a very simple example. First, we save inner text to a variable. Then we clear the content through this method, uh, write with an empty string, clean everything. Then we assign the content back to the inner text. This is just an example. There are many other ways to manu manipulate content. And this method is also very effective. Okay, this is the first version. And naturally, we would like to expand this idea, pair this concept. We would like to take uh, one more step. So we have a second version of Fuzzer. We simply went through the whole spec MSDN and pick, it, pick up interesting property and method. Property like um, we assign a property with value A, then assign it with value B, that's a pair. Or method, we assign it with parameter A, then parameter B, that's another pair. Or um, two methods, they are doing contrary things. Uh, that's method A and method B, that's a third pair. We collect those pair and save it into a list and randomly pick a um, pair from that list and put it into the template and fill the rest part randomly. Right. So this enhancement also doing well. Then we extend um, pair further. We have third version, third generation of the pair. And in this version, this um, we have we divided pair into four different types. The first one is the explicit pairings. Um, this pairing is very straightforward. Just do something. Um, uh, on or switch to off or assign to value A, value B, or coding a method, very straightforward. And the second type of pairing is doing pairing implicitly, which means we try to manipulate something that maybe de not defined on the spec, but also very important while page loading, page rendering, something like don't tree relationship, we, change, we swap the parent child or there are two pages, we, uh, we navigate between those two pages. That's also a pair concept. Um, okay, the third type of pair is hybrid pairing. Uh, I will explain this type of pairing uh, in detail later. And the fourth one is pairing combination. We simply uh, mix them all together and use multiple pairings per page. Okay, um, I will explain each different types in detail and give you, give you a few examples. For explicit pairing, like I said, uh, we're doing something, we change something very straightforward. For example, here we have a.style.display. We change it from block to non. Block means we render this object as a block element. Then we change it to non. Non means do not render it. It became, it become invisible. So which will release something. Will let browser try to release something. This is a pair. This is an example for the property. Okay, an example for the method is uh, two methods doing contrary things, like b.focus, then b object will get focus. Then we call b.blur, 
and lamp B will lose the focus. And command. Commands are very interesting. Uh, here, the first example is we indent an object. Then we outdent the object. <laughs> or we can select all. We can uh, execute a select all. Then we execute an unselect, which let browser very busy. Okay. And the last example for the explicit pairing is we uh, register two different purpose event. Like we can register on focus in and focus out and doing something different in each event listener. Okay. Uh, the following example are all patched or fixed by the Microsoft and these examples are not reported by us. So I think it should be okay to present here. Okay, let's have a look here. And the, the pair here we use is focus in and focus out. Uh, this script is very simple. In this line, we uh, call a focus. So focusing, focusing will be invoked. And in focusing, we create a new body object and replace the old one. So while the old one being replaced, the focus out will be triggered. And we will execute a document that write to clear the document content. Okay, here's another example. The pair we use here is indent and outdent to move object. Uh, first, here we have a list here. In static part, we have a list here and we have a button here, and we, during unload, we will uh, invoke this function, and during this function, let's ignore here first, we will execute an indent, and this indent actually will trigger the unresize event, and during this event, we will execute an outdent. Then we clear this object, o o o o the outer text, clear it to zero. And for some reason, uh, this unresize will be triggered several times and cause a reference count issue. And in the end, while we execute a select all, bang, okay. Um, now I would like to talk about implicit pairing. Implicit pairing is, uh, means we trying to manipulate something that is not property, not method, not attribute, but also very important for a page. Something like a content. Uh, I already, we already have an example. We can manipulate content through the inner text or through the document that writes with an empty string. Another implicit pairing is uh, manipulate the DOM relation. Like we can swap the parent node and child node. We can append a node, apply the element, um, remove child, there are many, many things can do, can do. Or we can change the web page status. We can navigate from page A to, to page B, use uh, window.navigate with a URL, or um, through location.hreference to another page. Okay, uh, the implicit pairing we used here is we change the DOM relation here. Start from the static part, we have a table here. The ID is BH1. Then we have a BH2 and BH3. BH3 is a TD. Then very simple. We simply use BH1.apply element to change the BH3 become the parent of the BH1 then trigger the problem. Okay. The, uh, Third types of pairings, hybrid pairings. Um, we know we found that if we only fuzzing in a dynamic part, it, or only with dome tree, only on the dome tree, then we will only find vulnerability related to dynamic part. So in order to increase the coverage, we need to add the static part. So our fuzzer will also cover the static static part fuzzing, uh, something like 
we will assign an attribute at a static part randomly, and then we change that attribute in the dynamic part, uh, which means we change one thing from two different parts. This concept can also use, like, uh, we change your property with a statement, then later we change it again with a method, which also change one thing from two different parts. Uh, so that's the meaning of hybrid pairing. Okay. This is an example. First, we change an attribute with a statement. Then we change it again with a clear attribute. We simply just clear it. Here is another example. The pair here is uh, we set content edit editable to true in static part. Then we change it to false in the dynamic part. Um, here, static part, we have a table here and caption. And during unload, we will execute a command select all here. And this select all will trigger static part on select start, which will clean the inner HTML of TTTT, TTT, uh, clear the HTML here. Later, we uh, use a crack garbage to force trigger the problem. Okay, um, this example, the pair is, um, we execute a command, uh, we execute a select first, a method, then we execute a command to unselect. Okay, uh, this example, when we execute a select, it will trigger the unselect event here event callback here, and BH2 will try to swap a node, and this action will trigger BH0 on property change. Then we execute the unselect and trigger the UAF problem. Okay, the last one is uh, pairing combination, which means we combine multiple pairs all together in one uh, template. Here we can see the pair here is uh, style. Uh, here we have two, we change two style here and we assign uh, two style here first. Let's go through this uh, example. In static part we have a form here, the ID is BH0. Um, and we set BH1 its style to overflow equal to visible. Later in the dynamic, dynamic part, first we change the BH1.style.overflow to auto, from visible to auto. Then we change the BH0.style.display to known, which means do not render this object. And this one will trigger a unresized event, then uh, we will execute a document that body that remove child to remove the BH0. Mess up the whole dom tree relation. Okay. Uh, so how we construct the test cases. Uh, so we build a list of pairs, explicitly, implicitly, hybrid, and combination pairs in a list, then we uh, randomly, ins randomly insert these pairs into the template. Like if we feel here and here can insert a template statement, then we insert the first statement, plus plus, plus, plus means the first statement, minus minus means the second statement here. Or if we feel we need a static part and dynamic part pairing, uh, we will insert here and here. This is how we build a template. So let's see a demo, how it looks like. Uh, here's a template. In the beginning, we can fast the compatible information here 
And then we have a uh, CSS part. And later on, we can um, randomly, randomly register event here. And we can insert the predefined pair here and try to trigger the event later. Also, we generate, um, we will generate static part here and assign it with ID. And event callback is uh, also generated here. Uh, pair com com configuration file. From here, you can see the pair number. Uh, we, yeah, we guide the randomness. Uh, we guide random to randomly change the direction property from right to left to left to right. This is the first example, and we have many, many here. Okay, let's run the program. Um, so this is how it looks like while fuzzing. Okay, that's it. Okay. Um, okay, now I would like to talk about the implementation detail. We don't use any script. We don't have, we don't use Ruby. We don't use Python. All of, of our implementation is in C. And uh, we have 20 VMs and one master server. 15 VMs is for routine fuzzing. And five of them is for experimentation because we always have new idea or new pairings we would like to try. We will run on those experimentation VMs. Um, we have a so-called one million sample rules. If a new idea, if we have a new idea, we will run it. And if after one million samples, there's nothing interesting, we, we didn't find anything interesting, then we will stop. Probably that direction is wrong. And probably that module we try to fast is very robust. So this is our rule, one million rule. And we have one master server to collect and analyze all the results. Um, okay, we will enable the full page heap verification for IE, so it will be much easier to get the crash. And um, once crash, we will save the web page immediately, and we will also save the crash dump uh, at the same time. And third thing, we to, third thing to do is we will try to re reproduce the crash again at local because, because uh, there are many root calls for a crash. So if it will crash again, we think it is very stable. So we will upload the sample along with the crash dump to the server. And server will save those some samples and dumps according to the crash dump, uh, crash address. So all the uh, dumps crash at the same address will be safe under the same folder. We only need to uh, look at two or three, then we can uh, deter. We can we then we know if it is worth to um, go deep to look further. Okay, here's the result. So far, we have 8.1 million crashes samples. And uh, there are over 400 unique crashes. Um, there are 150, we think, exploitable bugs. And why there are 400 unique crashes, but only 150 exploited bugs? Um, some of the crashes, they are not exploitable. And some of the several crashes may point to the same root cause. So we think there should, there should be 150 exploitable bugs. And we already report 106 bugs to the Microsoft. Five are considered duplicated and four was rejected. 
So far, we got 71 CVEs. And the list CV affecting from IE6 to IE11. Okay, future work. Um, so far, we only charge IE, uh, but we think maybe Chrome and Safari, Safari are worth to try. And PDF, P we can also run Flash JavaScript in PDF. So maybe we can also use Pair to fast the PDF. And Flash, Flash, we can run Action Script. So maybe Pair can also help uh, Flash fasting. be so fast. Okay, we would like to thank um, Yamata Lee and Wu Xi provide uh, many valuable um, valuable information and Anthony help the whole fuzzing structure. Okay, so Q&A. Yes. Uh, thank you. Excuse me? Uh, the question is, do I publish, will, will I publish my code? Uh, probably not, probably not. And if actually, um, if you use the same code, probably you will find the same bug as us. Yes, so, yes, yes. So we, we think the better approach is uh, you understand our concept, you understand our strategy and maybe you can add your own idea into it and you can maybe you can find new bug yeah for for our team uh, uh, yeah we we the first time we build a fast faster we don't look uh, cross faster we don't look grinder because we don't want to build something like then we don't want affect by their thought so we uh, build our our own things from scratch so I would suggest you, um, you can take the idea and build your, build your own faster. Yes. Okay, the question is, uh, uh, was it only use after free bugs I found? And um, we found a few double free bugs, but very few. And most of the bugs are use after free and type confusion. Yes. Okay, so the question is, um, uh, will, uh, will isolate hip and the memory protection patch from Microsoft affect the fuzzing? Uh, okay, so yes, it will, affect, it will affect the fuzzing, but they are defeatable, actually. And um, for memory protection, uh, that, me that mechanism actually covers uh, many user after free bugs Microsoft starting to starting to reject those bugs can be covered by memory protections, um, but we think if there, but uh, we think if one day a method can bypass the memory protection, then those bugs will resurface again. Yeah, and isolate isolate heap also can be defeatable. Yes, but they are also <laughs> affect our fasting. Okay, so thank you.